Now, I've referred to C.G. Young quite a lot so far because he's created a body of work that allows us to understand Circuit 6 without getting lost in too much New Age woo-woo or weird mystical nonsense. Many people, including myself, believe he was a genius on par with some of the greatest thinkers of the last several hundred years. And as mentioned before, Jung was a very well-known founder of modern psychology. He was even considered a sort of celebrity in his time. But he lived a double life, which he describes in his memoirs. There was a number one personality, the extroverted, respectable public figure, and there was his number two personality, the secret introverted mystic. This number two personality explored the depths of his own unconscious and he sought out direct dialogue with the archetypal representations in his unconscious. Jung privately chronicled his experiences with a technique he called active imagination. He would spend evenings in silence exploring fantastical environments and contacting entities within his own imagination. Author Peter Kingsley, known mostly for his work on mystical and ancient Greek philosophers, wrote a book on Jung called Catafalque, here on the right. Kingsley argues that Jung was more like a prophetic biblical figure than most people realize. Kingsley argues that the rational scientific Jung known to the world was a cover. This cover allowed him to continue his mystical work without being too publicly shamed about it. The real C.G. Young, according to Kingsley, was a prophetic figure who brought back knowledge about the depths of the unconscious from the depths of the unconscious. In other words, Young went down into the basement and came back up without completely losing his mind like John C. Lilly or Philip K. Dick did. Early in his career, Young made a name for himself by insisting that schizophrenics should be listened to. Regardless of how ridiculous their fantasies and visions sounded, Young recommended that psychologists attempt to understand their inner logic and the symbolism behind the hallucinations and the fantasies of the mentally ill. He found that imagery and themes brought up by schizophrenics were consistent with classical mythology mythology that patients never learned of consciously. When visiting the depths of his own unconscious fantasies, Jung would converse and interact with Philemon, a figure he first encountered in a dream. This is a figure that shares a name with a real-life first-century Christian and shares a name with a character that features in two books that had a great impact on Jung, one of them being Faust. Philemon was not the only entity that Jung encountered during explorations into his fantasies, but certainly the most impactful. He wrote, Philemon and other figures of my fantasies brought home to me the crucial insight that there are things in the psyche which I do not produce, but which produce themselves and have their own life. At times, Philemon seemed to me to be quite real, as if he were a living personality. Jung painted Philemon on several occasions. Here are some examples. In the top picture you'll find the winged Philemon holding a ring of keys in one hand and a single key in the other. Young said, I understood that there was something in me which can say things that I do not know and do not intend, things which may be directed against me. I went walking up and down the garden with Philemon and to me he was what the Indians call a guru. 